is there some part of yourself that's hidden to you? Some part of yourself that you don't have access to or don't normally have access to through the usual means of thought, self-reflection, and so forth. Well, this video really is an investigation, a direct investigation into the nature of identity, of self. So it's the kind of thing that, if you're interested in this, this unbinding, awakening, realization, it's the kind of thing that you're probably going to get the most out of by following along, by listening to what I'm suggesting you ask yourself, and then actually asking yourself, and then looking at where the answer leads you. Before we start, I do want to say that, as usual, I'm not trying to point you to a conceptual understanding. I'm not trying to point you to a bunch of thoughts or a bunch of ideas or concepts that you can write down and share with someone else later. The idea is to go as deeply into your experience as possible. And a big part of that's going to be that you're going to go beyond the ability to describe to yourself or anyone else. And that's okay. That's the whole point of this. So let's just start by asking yourself, who am I? And then just watching what happens. When you ask the question, who am I? Do thoughts appear? Any form of thoughts at all? A thought answering the question saying, well, I'm so-and-so, you know, maybe your name, where you came from, who your parents are, or maybe a description about your character, qualities, etc. Did these thoughts appear when you asked the question, who am I? Or maybe there was some self-narrative like, I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe there was some narrative about this process that says, well, every time I do this, I get lost, or I don't get it, or I don't know what to do, or I don't know where to look. Now, any of these possibilities, any of these thoughts that I've mentioned, these narrative thoughts, self-reflection thoughts, thoughts about the process itself, we can just consider them all in the same category. We're just going to call them thought. And now I'm going to say, when you ask this question, I'm actually not interested in the thoughts. Why? Because the thoughts are occurring to you, right? And then the next part of that is, the you that those thoughts are occurring to, was it not there before the thoughts appeared? Or once the thoughts subside or are replaced by another thought, isn't that sense of you still there? Or does it seem to be there? Hopefully you can see that the thoughts can come and go, change forms, be there, not be there. But that which is somehow aware of the thoughts, that which is apparently what the thoughts are referring to, or who the thoughts are referring to, or who's listening, who's considering this contemplation, that that is certainly more primary, more continuous, more already here. So once you see that, you can ask the question again and just see what happens. Who am I? You may prefer the question, what am I? You may even prefer the question, where am I? Where meaning, does it seem like the question is emanating from somewhere specific? If so, see if you can find it precisely in your experience. Maybe it doesn't make any sense to do that. Maybe the mind says, how can I find me? I'm already me or something. And again, these are thoughts. Who did those thoughts occur to? Who did those thoughts arise for or to? Or who do they seem to be about? And where is that one? So this can become a very tactile type of experience or something that feels almost like you're trying to look inward with an eye that only looks outward. Trying to look inward with an attention 
that only wor- lo- seems to look outward. But does it? Is there a way to turn the attention on itself? Is there a way for that self, wherever it is, to be purely aware only of self, without thought? Is there a way for that hidden, perhaps hidden, aspect of ourself to suddenly be revealed because there only is the experience of self? See, when the thoughts are believed that say, I'm this and I'm not that, or this is my view, or I'm confused right now, whatever those thoughts seem to be saying, when that occurs, they sort of narrow down the experience of you into the one that's confused or the one that's trying to figure it out or the one that's entangled in thoughts and concepts. And as that narrows down, it excludes other experience, other parts of what's available right now. And so it can feel like something's hidden when we consider this. And then I would suggest consider the possibility that there's also a primary experience here that is not narrowed down like that. It's not fixated on anything. It's not focused on anything specific. It actually doesn't even care about the question or the answer. It's not concerned to find anything because there's nothing it could find because it's already everything. It's not concerned about losing anything because there's nowhere into which it could lose anything. There's nowhere for anything, anything to go at all. It's that complete, that all-encompassing, infinite, without boundary. So that knowing, that kind of knowing being, clarity, it really doesn't have anything to say here. And in it not having anything to say, It misses nothing. Nothing can be overlooked. Nothing is in the dark. We could use terms like light of consciousness. There's only the light of consciousness shining into itself in every direction. Not pointed out like a beam or a flashlight because that's a thought. But just pure, conscious, knowing, pure, conscious light with no object of knowing. That's a really important part. No object of knowing. It's knowing before knowing gets entangled in an object, like a thought. This is how primary your experience can get. You don't have to call it anything. You don't have to call it a self. You don't have to call it a no self. You don't have to call it awareness or consciousness. Because these labels will start to seemingly narrow attention down again. If we even use the word awareness or consciousness, it could suggest that there's anything but that. But if we stop using words altogether, and we just notice the experience that is already primary, already here, couldn't not be here, it's experiencing all of these movements of mind, all these attempts to find it, But it's also experiencing none of that because it only experiences itself in a sense. You could call this the I am sense, not the I am thought, not any kind of specific type of self, like a small self or a large self or a conscious self or, but the I am sense is this pure knowingness without the label pure knowingness. You can't fall out of this. (laughs) You can't even fall into it, but you can suddenly be mind boggled that if it's been here the whole time and it's here right now, and it never could not be here. And it's just that simple, just that easy. That's a trip when that happens. But up until the moment that happens, it can feel like you're struggling with this, trying to find something, trying to find what you think I'm talking about. If you notice yourself trying to find what you think I'm talking about, set it aside. It's just one more thought. 
just one more belief in something later. There's nothing later. There's no later. That's the beauty of this. You're not going to get somewhere. You're not going to leave this moment. You don't need to track this moment. You don't need to think about what's going on. You don't need to find anything. I could say rest in this knowingness, but even that sounds like an act because you're already resting in it. It's resting in itself ultimately. So this resting in itselfness just is. Nothing is hidden from it. Nothing is hidden inside of it. There is no inside of it. There's no outside of it. But it's not somewhere else and it's not absent. It's fully present. Presence is this. And again, a label. Let the labels go. Because labels always have baggage. They'll remind you of when you learned it, how you learned it, what the techniques are, who the teachers are. So just let the labels go. And notice that the resting in this is already happening. Couldn't not be happening. And here, nothing is hidden. The concern for self is just not a concern anymore. Because the self seems to suggest there's something that's not a self. These are intertwined, illusory concepts, self and no self. Let them go. Let all the concepts go. And see that nothing can be hidden.